Today we'll be seeing some of these prints, um, but also digital ones with newer technology that allows for different techniques. Um, so let's begin the tour. So like I said, we're going to be seeing a lot of works that, well not a lot, but some works that were printed in a darkroom. But one of the most common things that you'll be seeing today is that the medium is digital inkjet print. Um, so I won't really be saying the medium unless it's something different, but we're starting off with Jack Kleinman's Moonrise Grand Canyon created in 2019. A common theme you'll see throughout the show is there's a lot of black and white pieces, um, which the juror also photographs often in black and white, so I think he leaned a little bit towards that, but he never said that to me, so I have no evidence. This is just my own assumptions. Um, here we have Vicki Reed, Gateway 2020, digital inkjet print. Vicki does this really interesting thing with her photos is that she'll take one photograph and then she will mirror it. So you have this really interesting dimension happening, um, which you'll see throughout the show that we have some people who mani manipulate their works, such as Vicki. I'm not totally sure how she does it, but it creates this really interesting viewpoint here. Next, we have another work by Vicki. This is called Island of Size 2021. Um, and she is actually our first purchase award. So this is the Carol Ann McNeil Scoropin Memorial Purchase Award. For this show, it's slightly different than our others in that there's no like first, second, or third place award. There's instead um, memorial purchase awards. And so we pay the artist for their work and then there are, our work work is going to come into a RAM's permanent collection so that we can showcase it in the future. If you've been to RAM recently, um, our last show we had Fool the Eye, we actually had a couple works that were from past watercolor Wisconsin's that were purchased and then shown later. Here we have Carl Wellian 6, Arctic Ocean in Winter 2019. Of course, in this area, we have a lot of different water happening with Lake Michigan. Now, I don't know that this was taken in Lake Michigan, but that is another common theme we will see out throughout the show is landscapes of water, water-related um, pieces. Next up, we have Mustafa Dorga's Mirroring Effect 2022. Again, we have water um, shown in this piece with several silhouettes of people walking along the beach. So a little history about photography. Many photography timelines begin with the first known photograph by, now excuse me if I pronounce his name wrong, um, Nisfor Nietzsche in 1827, but photography can actually go back dating to 500 BCE to 1600 BCE with the camera obscura. Before we get into that, we have another piece by Mustafa called Christopher Blue, Austin, Texas, 2022. Um, but for those who don't know, the camera obscura was a tool used by some artists that allowed them to easily draw or paint realistic landscapes and rendering of architecture. In its simplest form, it is a pinhole that projects the scene into a dark room or box that the artist can basically trace over. Since the word photography is literally defined as drawing with light, we can look at the concept of the camera obscura beginning the timeline of photography. Here we have a very tiny piece. Um, so for security reasons, we have it under vitrine just so it's kept safe, doesn't get taken off our wall without us knowing. This is by Kate Felt, Low 6, 2021. One of the common themes throughout um, this hallway is that you'll see a lot of the pieces are, are on the smaller side. Um, so we keep them in the front hall so we can keep an eye on them just for security reasons. Throughout the rest of the galleries, you'll see some more larger works. And because we have an outside juror jury in this show, there's not necessarily a theme we know of when they pick the works. So Ram's exhibition curator, Lena Vignal, will then look at all of the works and find some common themes to create each gallery space. Here we have Nicole uh, Reimer's Nevermore 2022. Oh, okay, we have a comment I see on the screen. Um, 
And the, they're asking if these were taken in Wisconsin. Um, no, these do not have to be taken in Wisconsin. The artists just need to live in Wisconsin. So they're Wisconsin photographers. This piece is printed on metal. We can have um, a diff couple different backings for the work in the show. So this one is metal. We can also have paper. Um, also can be printed on a type of plastic that I'm, I'm blanking on the name right now, but we don't have any of those in the show. Mostly it's just going to be paper or metal that you'll see. Here we have Philip Kasner, Busker, 2022. Next is Bianca Butcher, Root River Heron, 2021. So you can see that for those who aren't local to this area, Root River is a river that runs through a scene. So it's a fun little take on the local area with her piece. All right, we're going to go to the next wall, and we'll get the rest of the pieces on the other wall in a second. Here we have Cassandra Rijogas, Purple 2020. The great image showcasing some purple flowers. Next, we actually have a piece that I took. Um, this is called Covering 2022. Staff can also participate in juried shows since all of the juried shows are anonymous um, and that the jurors don't know who they're getting into the show or not. So I was lucky to get a piece in this year. I took this at the Chicago Botanic Gardens and I thought the covering of the leafy foliage was just very interesting. I printed this on metal. Next, we have Don Haggerty, Frost 2, 2021. So another interesting thing about photography is that it really hasn't been around too long in the state that we see it today. So like I said, it, it first began as early as 500 BCE, but the digital images that we are mostly seeing in this show were not um, produced until... They were created in a Kodak lab in 1975, and at that time, they took 23, se 23 seconds to capture a 0 0.01 megapixel image. The camera was super basic, but the recording apparatus weighed in at 8 pounds. Next, we have Nancy Storino, Day and Night Lighthouse, 2021. Again, coming back to how water is really important within our area, the next actually three images after this one will also be uh, water related, which is a unifying figure with the rest of these pieces. So after Kodak created the digital image in their lab in 1975, in 1999, Nikon introduced the D1. This was the first time that a major camera manufacturer designed and built a camera that was specifically designed as a digital system camera. Here we have Melva. Melva's piece. Is Holland on the other side or is it Fenville 2020? Really an interesting showcasing of the lake or another body of water in winter with the ice forming on some of the uh, branches there with either a sunset or a sunrise in the background. Next, we have Kara Oldenburg Elson, Splash 2020. Kara actually got two pieces into the show. Um, we'll see the next second piece in a second. Um, it's very interesting because she, like I said, took two water photographs and next to each other, they're a fun different dimension of how the lake looks 
during a warm moment. As you can see in this image, we have some beautiful colors of the sunset or sunrise and the water splashing up into the air, creating some really interesting shapes. But then the next beach, which Chiro is showing you now, is of the lake during winter, and it's incredibly frozen. This is called January 2020. Being that we live on a freshwater lake, it's very interesting how things can freeze, unlike the ocean does. So we get these really interesting icicles that form, and then the ice-covered rocks that just really show how cold it can get here. All right, we're going to finish off the opposite wall over here, starting off with Howard Schwartz, untitled number 10, 2021. This is coming back to another artist that is manipulating their artwork. We have what appears to be a mannequin, um, and the picture is manipulated so you can see like she has two faces and the hat's kind of blurry like she was moving as he took the photograph. Moving along, we have Jacinta Lagos, Ecstasy 2021. Jacinta takes a lot of her photographs. Um, she asks permission from mothers and goes into birthing rooms and showcases the really intimate moment as mothers and their partners give birth to children. As you can see in this photo, we have the mother holding her child and um, a male figure in the background that maybe is her partner um, smiling down at the child. Finally, we have three works by Celia Schultz. Celia is actually the only one that got three pieces in this show. Each artist could have um, at most three to four images, sometimes more. We like to showcase this show as a portfolio show. This year, the juror took a different approach, and he selected more often one picture from each artist, so we can include a lot of voices in the show. Um, but for Celia, he chose three. So the, her first one is called Rise Above Hate Kenosha 2022 was when it was printed. But most likely this piece was taken during um, the riots that happened with the Black Lives Matters movement back in 2020. And here we have a nun that's looking at up all the boarded walls of the businesses that were happening in downtown Kenosha. In contrast, her next piece is called Obsidian 2022 which looks like an ice chunk against the background of a water body. All of Celia's pieces are printed on metal. Interestingly, it looks like her first picture that we were just looking at was of color. This next one, um, maybe she did it in sepia tones or that could have been the colors that she was able to capture during that moment. And then her final one here is a black and white image. This is called Motif 2020. Showcases a grouping of flowers that are in the middle of her work. Next up. We're going to start walking to the galleries, but before we get into that space, we're going to look at Bernie Newman's work, Rims 2020. As you can see, we are already moving into bigger pieces. I don't remember the exact dimensions for this one, but it uh, takes a good space up on this wall. We have, again, it's a black and white image of some um, boulders, maybe on the side of a mountain or a ridge, but it gives really interesting contrast in like the power of Earth. All right, now we are going to move into our gallery space. This first gallery space here, we are starting with uh, Jeffrey Robinson, Untitled, number 
2434, 2020. I believe this uh, piece showcases the lighthouse in Kenosha, but it also might be a different lighthouse. Kenosha has a very prominent red lighthouse in there, and I, that's where I live, so that's why it makes me think of that lighthouse, at least. Next, we have Avni Shah's Mirror 2020 Digital Inkjet Print. Here we have a photograph that's black and white of some trees on the horizon and they are being reflected or mirrored as she is titled in this piece of the body of water that's in front of it and it's a lake. I believe that this piece was taken in Milwaukee but I can't say that for certain. Only Avni can. This gallery space is mostly made up of different landscapes, which is one of the traditional um, pieces that are taken with photography, as we've seen so far. Next, we have Richard Wunsch's Double Rainbow 2022. This piece really speaks to the different countrysides that you can find in Wisconsin with that classic red barn and the farm field. And it's really fun. He has um, a great capture and then he has all the clouds and then the double rainbow taken in the background, really showing the moods of the Midwest. Breaking from our landscape views, we have two pieces by Paul Bernack. Um, on the left is Violet Number 1, 2021, and then the one on the right is Violet Number 3, 2022. These are silver gelatin prints. So these, this kind of a print is was really loved by many 20th century photographers. Um, but as you can see here, people still use this method today. This image consists of civil, silver medical particles suspended in a gelatin layer, and they're developed in a dark room, like I was mentioning earlier. I'm not totally sure how Paul took these images, but my only guess is that he took some violets he found outside in his yard or maybe a neighboring park, and he laid them on a light table and took the picture from below. Maybe Paul can add something to that if he's watching today. He'll, he could put in the comments. But if not, we can only be left to wonder. This piece that Tyler's focusing on right now is one of the Memorial Purchase Awards. This is the Barbara Prober Memorial Purchase Award. So this piece will be coming into Ram's collection for us to showcase in the future. And if you have seen the catalog for this exhibition, that's actually on the cover. So you might have already gotten a sneak peek of that. Here we have Marlene Sally's Palm Trees 2022. Following there are two works by Mark Weller. This first one is Low Tide 2022. This shows a water landscape with a beach in front of it. The waves must have recently come over top of the sand because you can see this great fluffy cloud reflected in the sand on the beach. Mark's second piece is called Storm at Wilkie Prairie Preserve 2021. Marx likes to do this really interesting process where over a certain span of time, he will take many photographs and then he will layer the photographs on top of one each other, on each other. A little different than exposure because exposure is when the lens of a camera is open for a long time and it will get the movement, but this is what he calls time stacking. 
So it creates a really interesting movement that you can see of the clouds um, here. So he's not, he's manipulating the photographs, but a little differently than some of the works that we have seen previously. Next is Megan Vander, oh, I'm sorry, Vanden Bush, big fan, 2021. Again, we have a water landscape here with a wave coming up onto, I believe that's a sidewalk, creating what she is calling a big fan. Being that we're in an old house museum, as maybe some people don't know, but what was museum First was a house, and then it was donated um, to the city to be created into an art center, and which later developed into the Racine Art Museum. So it creates some really interesting contrast for how we can display art. Here we're coming onto a corner. We have two different artists. So we're first looking at Phyllis Bankier. We have here um, Reaching Out 2021, number seven, created in 2021. So the way that these are positioned, we can have different artists' voices talking to each other. So here, Phyllis has two different um, water landscapes. Both look like warmer months. I mean, this could be spring or fall or summer even. Um, but once we go over to Omar's, we again, similar to we had up front, we have a frozen landscape. As Tyler is showing you briefly now. And then here's uh, Phyllis's second piece. We have Cloud Reflections 2021, number one, created in 2021, showing the different moods that water can be in, and different colors that the sky can create. And then here is Omar Juarez's piece pieces. On the left, we have Center for the Arts 2020. And on the right is Frozen Altar 2022. Here, Tyler is looking at Center for the Arts. As you can see, the Omar was able to capture this really interesting sculpture as the sky was creating some very interesting cloud shapes behind it. Had a great movement in that piece. And then we have Frozen Altar, which similar to up front, it's a of Lake Michigan or a different body of water during winter as it is freezing over everything near the lake shore. Next up, we have the final piece in this room by Emmy Burning, Untitled 2021. We have some great different flowers that she showcased in here. That might seem a little bit more unusual with the stamens that are very curly that are coming out of the pieces. And I'm not quite sure what flowers these are, but they're fun to look at. We're going to move into our next gallery space now. We're starting with Wesley Fallon's Lady Greed 2022. Wes created this series of the seven deadly sins. This is one of the pieces, Greed, of course, and he added on to this with a very ornate gold frame to further showcase greed that is happening. He um, has a model that he found and, of course, dressed her up in opulence to really showcase greed that is happening. Here is Seth Robbins, Milwaukee. Oh, I can't read it from this far. Milwaukee. 
uh, and I, excuse my pronunciation, Hatch Nassos Sefer Torah Celebrating 2021. You can see this is one of the larger prints that we received um, and it's showcasing a celebration that's happening in Milwaukee. And we have, maybe this was one of the longer exposures in contrast to Mark Weller's time stacking. Um, Seth had his exposure longer, so we get these really interesting movements of people moving around this area. Next up, we have Cherry Smiley's Hollow Self-Reflection 2022. And this is one of the Memorial Purchase Awards. This is, again, Carol Ann McNeil's Score Open Memorial Purchase Award. This will be coming into Ram's collection at the close of the show. We have a woman looking to the left of her portrait. And then you can see dimly... Um, kind of faded on the left hand side of this we have a reflection of her portrait facing the other way though double stacking we have two works by F Fisher the top is woman and dog doorway this is part of a series he did, both of them. Um, this is Fratelli Pizziriana, Rome series, 2021. And like the name suggests, we have a woman and a dog in a very large doorway, which I think is fun to look at because it's very different from the architecture we would see in the United States. Below, we have Scooter Wall Travestery. You guys are really challenging me with the pronunciations this time. I should have interrogated all of you beforehand, so I got it right. <laughs> this is again from Rome Series 2021. Next, we have Jennifer Parb's Light in Finland 2019. This is an archival digital inject print. So an archival pigment print is museum quality pieces that use refined particles of pigment to create high resolution artwork and they are designed to last a long time. Here you can see a, um, a person standing and it, lo it looks like a void. Um, as they are holding, I believe it's a ukulele, but it is a stringed instrument for sure. And they are looking at the one moment of light in that room. Can really interesting contrast. Around the corner from that piece, we have Dennis Dar Darmex piece. Um, quite a long title because it's also a little bit of an explanation about the piece. PFC William Bagshaw and Nagunyan Sin Trakui. Vietnam, the 18-year-old was killed by an American airstrike during the Battle of Hue, 2021. Next, we have Susan Schramm's Winged 2021. Here we have a bird that's facing away from the viewer and it's stretching its wings, creating this really interesting shape that potentially people don't normally take. Um, and have, the bird has this beautiful pink color to it, which is contrasted of the dark green of the tree it's sitting on, as well as the background of presumably more trees. Here, then, we have two wor works by Russell Pinchenko. The first is Spring Beauty 2019. Both of his works are close-up images of flowers. These first ones, I believe, are peonies.
Next is Wild Triumvirate 2020. Next in the space, we have a portrait of an adorable little girl. This is by Penny Nichols, Sleepy Sun Sunshine Stroll, 2022. You see a little girl strapped into a backpack of her parent, looking at the camera with her cute little sun hat on. Here is Christine Henricks, Inside Looking Out, 2021. This piece, you can tell by the architecture if you're from around this area, or maybe just because you know of the museum, showcases Milwaukee Art Museum, of course, in Milwaukee, um, looking inside from out. <laughs> As the name would suggest, you can see some of the architecture that is very quintessentially the Milwaukee Art Museum in the top right corner of like the Calatrava and the different triangles that you can see in that building. Contrasting to that, showcasing different humans, um, we have Frank Juarez's Protect Thy Neighbor 2021. Here is a scene within an airport of many people that are standing around. I believe they're waiting for their airplane. Most people are wearing masks looking down, waiting. It's an interesting contrast to what is happening now that the people aren't wearing masks as much, but there still are some out there as the pandemic is lessening. Next, we have Ron's stories, available light number three, 2022. Here we see a piece of glass that is filled with, I believe, water and the light is hitting it, creating these really interesting reflections and dimensions as the shadows are going through the light. So the next piece we're at looking at is actually two pieces. Um, we had four videos that were accepted into the show this year, which is another dimension of the photography show. Years before, we haven't had many people submit photos, but being that this juror is a video videographer himself, I think some people came out of the woodwork. So this first piece on the label is Karel Suki, Berkuse 2020. The duration of this one is four minutes and 53 minutes. Uh, 43 minutes and 53 seconds. There we go. <laughs> and then we have How Howard Tarnoff. When there's smoke, there's water, 2020. That one is four minutes and 32 seconds as well. So because these videos are quite long, we are not going to be watching them in their entirety. The one that Tyler is currently focused on is Howard Tarnoff's um, piece. I encourage you to come to RAM to watch these videos in their entirety. I wish we could show them... Um, fully, but we just don't have time for that, unfortunately. Next, then, we have Michael Nowatny's Glacial 2021. Michael's next piece then is Approach Alaska 2021. Last two pieces in this gallery, then, we have Renee Amato. 
Rene Amato, you might recognize his name. He was actually a Fellowship Award winner last year, and he had a exhibition upstairs at Worcester in the back hall featuring his photography. Um, this first piece is A World in White 2022. This is very quintessential Racine in that it features a downtown restaurant called Dewey's as the snow is absolutely coming down. As if you live in this area or another cold part of this world, you have experienced, I'm sure. And then excitingly, we have the next piece, Homeboys 2022, which will be coming into the collection. Um, so it's great to have him as he was one of our Fellowship Award winners. Now we can include his work in the future. This is the Christopher Johns Memorial Purchase Award. It felt doubly right in that this is Christopher Johns Memorial Purchase Award, where Chris was actually one of the Fellowship Award winners as well, but sadly passed away before he could see the end of his fellowship show. We did showcase his work, though, some of his older pieces, some of the new ones, and some of the pieces he had been creating in progress for the fellowship exhibition last year. One of the little touches I love of Renee's pieces is his signature is like a silhouette of his face, which I hadn't seen before, so I just think that's very fun. <laughs> I want to make sure everyone saw that. <laughs> All right, we're going to go upstairs now to show the rest of the works. So bear with me as we travel. And if you're ever at Wisdom and you or one of your the people you are with can't get upstairs, we do have a iPad that showcases all of the works that are in our upstairs gallery so you can see what's included there as well. Beginning on the right side of the gallery when you get upstairs, we have two pieces by Lynn Prober. This first is Sunflower 2022. So a fun little aspect about this gallery space is when our prep team was taking all the works out to start setting up with the exhibition curator, something they noticed was that there was a lot of circles in this show. So this gallery space has a lot of circles featured in it in some point. So here you can see the center of the sunflower is a circle. But in contrast that to that, Lynn's next week does not really have any circles in it. But we like to keep the artists work together. This is Clothesline 2020. One of the things I really like about Lynn's pieces is how colorful they are. This, you have these adorable different aprons hung out on a clothesline, all of different colors. Next are two pieces by Lena Myers. Pretty different sizes with both of these, which is pretty interesting. This first one, Tyler is looking at his Flutter 2022 showcases a female figure that is in some sort of body water and she's curled up in a fetal position and she has this gauzy fabric around her as bubbles are going up towards the surface. Lena's next piece is Cracked Open in parentheses 2 of 4 2022. Again, we have a female figure featured in water with a watermelon that is cracked open that she's holding in her stomach, which is the circle of Lena's pieces. Um, and we have floating around the female nude is different watercolor rinds and bits of it. I'm not sure if these are from the same series, but they're very good together because they are both water-based. Around this quarter, we have two works by Kathy Brand. The first one we will look at is called At the Market 2020. When I first saw this piece, I actually had to do a double take <laughs> because it is two masks in the forefront. And at first, I thought they were real people. She got me good. <laughs> so the one that's on the left, we see a person, potentially Kathy or maybe her friend, putting on the mask. And then we have another one of the masks on the right. Pretty good for Halloween coming up shortly. <laughs> Kathy's next piece is called The Donkey 2020. 
We have a donkey in the foreground with a little girl in the background smiling. Next up in our circle gallery is three circles that I think you'll be able to see without me telling you. <laughs> um, we first have Bruce Sales, climate change, strike number one, created in 2019. If you get Rams mailings and you heard about this virtual tour, you might recognize this piece because we used it as the marketing for the event. <laughs> um, this is one of the pieces that's coming into our collection. This is Arlene Witt Memorial Purchase Award. We actually already have a couple pieces of Bruce's in the collection from past photography shows. He um, has been submitting work since I think about 1970s, if I remember correctly, and a couple he donated himself. Um, and so we're glad to include this one in the collection. The other pieces of Bruce are actually black and white images of parades. So this will be an interesting development of his career. Here, this is Jack Long, Saran's Eye, 2021. Now again, this is a piece I'm not totally sure how Jack accomplished, but we have different drops of colored um, liquid that are coming down and they're cascading onto one of another, creating this really interesting dimension. And I'm sure Jack had to take so many photos to create this image. Next, we have Wesley Larson. And then here's another hard name for me, Skepernong Nostalgia 2021. Now, when I asked Wes what this piece was, because I was pretty curious, he wanted me to say what I think it is. So I want you all to think of what you think of it is. And I'll tell you what I think. <laughs> All right, we're gonna have Tyler pull away. So what I see when I look at this piece is I think this is a concrete wall graffitied with different sp spray paint, excuse me. And then we're looking on to maybe some woods or something or some vines, but only Wesley knows what it is. But now we all have our own idea <laughs> and mine. All right, we have two pieces by Glenn Larson in this corner. I think this is a really fun idea what he did here. So both of these are from the same series. It's called the Flashlight Excursion Series. This one right here is number six, and the one we'll look at it in a moment is number one. This first one was created in 2021, and the second is 2020. So from the name, I can only guess that Glenn went out into his garden with a flashlight and highlighted the different pieces in his garden and took photos of them to create this really interesting contrast of light and dark and we get the interesting shape of the zinnia um, and I also like that he didn't find the most perfect zinnia in his garden this one looks like a little bit on the way out there's a fly on it which actually this is the first time I'm noticing the fly here Tyler you see oh there's another fly oh there's a bug there's two bugs this is exciting the fly I saw is down here <laughs> so Glenn we're learning more about your piece every time we see it all right, and then in contrast to that one, we have this one. I think it's a Black Eyed Susan, but don't quote me on that. In contrast to that deteriorating flower with bugs on it, this one looks dewy and fresh with little droplets of water on all the petals. One of the petals is even still unfurling from the middle, which is pretty fun. Continuing our circle room, we have Michael Garricky's piece, Big Balls 2020. Now, Michael created this as a type C color print. So a type C color print is any photographic print that has been created by a digital exposure system, as opposed to a traditional dark room like the silver gelatin prints. It is developed by exposing a light sensitive, sensitive material to either LEDs or lasers with the material then washed using methods similar to traditional photography. The C stands for chromogenetic. 
chromogenic, chromogenic. Next is Craig Wilson's Ulbrich Labyrinth, 2022. Here we have a piece that potentially was photographed with a drone or some other system where we are high up in the sky and we were looking down and you can see that it's winter with lots of footprints around and we have a maze that is, I don't know if the real name is Ulbrich Labyrinth or that is what Craig is calling it, but it creates a really interesting pattern that you can see, which is a stark contrast against the snow. Going off of texture and material, we have Trace Chiodo's Knocking the Rust Off, 2020. This print shows metal that has rusted away with many different holes throughout it. And a golf ball. I don't know where this metal is. And looking at it, I kind of wonder, especially with that golf ball in it. <laughs> Pat Ryan has um, photographed a piece called Reverie 2022. Um, again, this is an archival inkjet print, which, like I said before, is that material that's printed so it can last a long time. Moving from this space, we're going to start walking to the next gallery, but we're going to stop in the hallway of the stairs because, of course, we can't forget these two pieces. First up, we have Dean Siegel's The Path 2022 digital inkjet print. Both of these works are kind of landscapes. This one's definitely a landscape, but you'll see what I mean about the second in a moment. Um, it showcases a, a path, as the name would suggest, going out into some woods. And you can't tell exactly what time of year it is, but for some reason I always picture it as fall in my head. Maybe it's because it's fall right now. But if this was color print, I always think of it maybe as yellowed leaves that are scattering the landscape. Then we have Charles Gutsky's Safe Passage, Passage 2021. Here we have an image, a tunnel that's going into the side of a hill, I believe, with a person in the background. And you can see their photo is mostly black and white image, except that person in the background, hopefully it's carrying through the video. They have red um, shirt, I believe, and it is shining through. We're going to move into the next gallery space. This one is a lot of landscapes again. Here on this wall, we have two pieces by Emily Kohler. Left is called Miss 2021. Or the right, I'm sorry. Right is Miss 2021 and the other is Spritz 2021. This image folk, um, is a cat looking out of a window Again, I don't know if it's because it's almost spooky season, it is spooky season, but I love the Halloween vibes that this piece gives off with the black cat looking out the window and the sh curtain that they're peering through. And Emily's next piece is of a tree that's, it looks like it's in a field, in a fog. Just feels a little spooky. Both great images, of course. Next, we have two pieces by James Pop. They are both taken in Kettle Moraine, um, which again, if you're from this area or you're familiar with Wisconsin, Kettle Moraine is a nature preserve that is a little bit more up north from where Racine is. This is Kettle Moraine 2, 2020. Both showcase the Kettle Moraine landscape and black and white images. This first one is trees 
that are growing from water or maybe there was a flood so the trees are coming up are still standing in the water then we have kettle moraine one 2021 and we have a tree landscape, but instead of being in water this time, it's amongst leaves with a plant that's growing out of the log, or it, maybe it's growing next to the log. Next is Sally Boker's Gesture, 2021. This will be coming into Ram's permanent collection. This is the Marilyn uh, Teichman Memorial Purchase Award. Here we can see a black, white, black and white image of three branches or sticks that are in the air with a piece of twine tied around them and it's flowing in the wind. Next is Diane Reiklinski, Ice Line 2020. Another great depiction of winter within the cold areas of the world. Icicles are being formed from some sort of a line. Maybe it's a telephone line or they have an outside clothesline. Either way, we have these really interesting icicles that are captured against a bright blue sky. Next up is Kenneth Kornacki, who's younger, or sorry, we're younger than clouds, 2022. I find this piece pretty fun. We have a little bit of a manipulation coming on here where Kenneth has taken two photographs. On the left, we have the um, tail of a plane flying in the sky. And then mashed up with that is the head of a fish. Reflecting the blue from the sky, we have blue within the fish, creating this really fun piece. Going off the blue of that, these last couple pieces, we have another blue piece by Carol Starr. It's called D2. If you can hear that, the Worcester bell just went off, <laughs> and it scared me. <laughs> This is a metal piece that she took um, where we have some really fun sheets of metal rusting away with age, but create really cool colorations. We have some blue, we have that rust, as well as some like more greens and brown tones. Next, we have Marcella Jones on uh, Unit D Drop Forge 2022. We have a building with old windows on it. So some are covered, some may be cracked. Creates really interesting texture and personality, I think. Here we have Elizabeth Kazda's transitional symmetry with common objects, whisk. 2022. All of the images that Elizabeth submitted this year were different common objects that she manipulated to create these interesting portraits. This one we have the whisk featured. You may remember some of Elizabeth's work as well as other people within this show. She has shown work here before within this exhibition. Wisconsin Photography is a biannual exhibition, so if you are a photographer, um, Either you submit it this year or you're interested in submitting another year. The next time we will have submissions will be in 2024. So start taking your photos now so you can submit them. This is two pieces by Timothy Holt. At the top we have Foggy Morning 2021. And funnily enough, the bottom is Foggy Morning at the Beach 2020. The process for this show is different from than a lot of our juried exhibitions since most of these works are taken as digital inkjet prints. They can be submitted virtually. So I will search for jurors um, for all of our juried exhibitions. For this show in 
specifically, I can find a juror that's throughout the country because all of the works are juried virtually. And they're shown through the artist through or the juror through a computer space. When we jury shows into Wisdom exhibitions, we generally want the juror to to select around a hundred pieces. Of course, this can be a little different depending on size. Here we are looking at um, two works by the same artist. This is Judith Penozo, After the Rain 2020 on the left, and Deep in the Valley, Valley 2020. But like I was saying, each, we select about 100 pieces um, for the show. As I said in the beginning, there's 113 works um, featured by 81 different artists. Artists can have more than one piece in the show. We just juried in our Watercolor Wisconsin 2022 exhibition, which is an annual exhibition. Um, so as an example, 106 pieces were juried into the show. I don't quite remember how many artists, but there are less artists um, than the works. There's several different people that had a couple of works in the show. If you ever have any questions about juried exhibitions or what's coming up, you can always contact me. Um, like I said in the beginning, my name is Kendra. You can find my contact information on RAM's website. I'm happy always to uh, answer questions about juried exhibitions. Here we have two pieces by the artist Thomas Lemke. First one Tyler is looking at is A Mask for the Warm, 2021. Both of his work feature really interesting landscapes of sand and dunes. Not sure where he captured these, but it feels like a landscape very far away to me. Thomas's next piece is Drifts Day and Night, 2021. Last wall in this gallery, then, are three more black and white prints. The first two on the right side of this wall are by William Lemke. First is Trees and Goose Island, 2021. Like I was mentioning um, when we were downstairs, there are several different people who did silver gelatin prints, and William is one of those. That's when you go into a dark room to create them. William's next piece is Along the Cottonwood Trail, 2021. The last work in this gallery is by Lewis Cadkin, Bay Water Stop, 2020. The showcase is, I believe, a train depot or maybe a subway um, as a, going into the tunnel with a lot of tracks. All right, we're gonna move from this gallery then to go towards our last gallery space. We're gonna begin with Joseph Van Wall's Halls, 2022, and this is a type C color.
And here are two works by Greg Burns. On the left is King's Steel Wheels 2020. Right is Sunset 2021. This one on the left showcases old wheels of some sort piled on one another. Some rusted away with either a sunset or sunrise happening in the background. His other piece is of um, a sunset or sunrise. Actually, it's a sunset, because the title is Sunset, of course. <laughs> Next are Michael Knapsing's pieces, the steamroller on the left and the thresher on the right, both created in 2022. Both of Michael's um, work that he submitted this year were taken, I believe, from a series where he was focused on more blue collar jobs as they were working outside, more maybe farm related jobs. And then here is the steamroller. I love the pose of this man on the top of his steamroller with his arm placed on his hip as he is locking off into the distance. And we have this really dynamic fluffy cloud behind him. Here are two pieces by Andrew Holman. Finishes off this little room we have here. This is so Katra Bottle Tree 2022. Features what I must assume is a bottle tree um, on a landscape with a bright blue background. And then we have Bolivia 1, 2022. This showcases several buildings, the person standing there. We're actually going to start over here. We have two pieces by Patrick Doman. This first one is No Trespassing 2022. Some people might remember Patrick's names from other shows. He's often included in with Watercolor Wisconsin. Um, so it was interesting for me to see photographs of his to see what is similar in his styles and what is not similar in the styles. His next one is Des Moines, I, uh, Des Moines Window 2022. This room is really oriented with a lot of manipulated photograph uh, photography. As you can, again, see the, these pieces. These are by Roy Schmidt. On the left is Rider 2022. And then the one on the right is Fire Eaters 2022 as well. First one, the Tyler is looking at fire eaters. And then this is Ryder.
You might be hearing it. I'm not sure how well it's picking up, um, but we have, we're coming up on one of the other videos and you would be hearing the sound from that if you were hearing something other than my voice. Next, we have two words, works stacked on top of each other by Valerie Christel. The top one is Mapping Oneself 2022, and the bottom is Crossed Paths 2021. Both of these works showcase hands with interesting dimension behind them. This piece is Crossed Paths. Next, we have two works by Paul Castor. The one on the left is 169 F C 2021, and the other is number 15 D C 2020. You might recognize Paul's name again if you've been to RAM recently with them. Um, over the summer, we had an exhibition called Blurry Boundaries, and we had um, two of Paul's works up. Um, different kind of a material, though, that he used in that show. Instead of photography with manipulations such as these, um, he had works that were created with materials such as pastels. Um, I can't remember quite else was in there, but there were very large works that again showed humanoid figures, um, seemingly like in these pieces. You can tell that Paul is interested within the human figure um, and exploring the different ways that it can be manipulated and shown. The last two photos of the show before we get to the two videos, we have two works by George J. Miller. On the left is Dandelion Whisper 2022, and on the right is Think, Her Words Matter, number three, 2022. Here we have pieces of different women that are layered with different images. All right, and then to end the exhibition, like I was saying earlier, we had several videos that were included this year. So here we have our last monitor displayed. Um, these are by two different artists. We have Todd Tuttle's Let the Ripples in the Rings 2021. That one is a minute and five seconds. And the other is Eduardo Zavala's The First Time I Wanted a Boy 2021. This one is six minutes and 16 seconds. Um, Eduardo's video is the one that's being shown on screen right now. Like I explained previously, we can't show them in their entirety, but I really encourage you to come down here and see the rest of the show. All right, and that's it, guys. That's the rest of the show. So for whoever stuck around, thank you so much for tuning in today to see this virtual tour of water, or not watercolor, Wisconsin Photography 2022. You can see what I've been doing lately. Um, so this show is open until November 26th, so you still have time to see it if you are interested in coming down. We are open at um, Wednesday through Saturday from noon till 4 p.m. at Rams Wisdom Campus. If you're also interested, tomorrow, Wednesday, we have three new exhibitions opening up at Rams Downtown Campus. We have a show on David Harper's Zodiac, so it showcases all 12 Zodiac signs um, in the constellations. And then we have Dynamic Duos, which is a show of glass artists that are two artists to create collaborative pieces. And then finally, we have a show of sketchbooks that shows the process of artists as they create their works. Um, if you have any questions, please include them in the um, comment box below and we can um, 
talk back to you later as we're a couple, we're a little short staff today, but please let me know if you have any questions and thank you so much for tuning in. Oh yeah, and Tyler kindly reminded me, for this show we have a little membership perk. So if you are a member of this museum of RAM, um, and, or if you would like to become one, you can log in with your membership at the bottom of the Wisconsin Photography page then. You can scroll all the way down and you can actually see all of the photography that is included within today's show. So if you can't make it in and you want to get a little bit more time with the photos than in this tour, you can see them there. All right. Thank you guys so much. I'll see you next time. Bye.